Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Lost Million Pokemon Trading Card Game Podcast. I'm Lucas, here with my co-host, Landon. How are we doing? Doing fantastical, Lucas. Doing very well. It was Canada Day yesterday. I got to watch some fireworks. Uh, That's pretty sick. I got to make lots of money at work because it was a holiday, and uh, now we're here talking about Pokemon cards. I love Pokemon cards. They're pretty lit, man. Um, there's lots of new ones that we're talking about. There's a lot of new ones that we're talking about. Uh, so these are sure. going to be some reveals for our fall set. Do you know what the set title is? I don't know. The okay. one we're getting after Worlds. So it doesn't matter. Um, the The name will probably be different than what it says right now because it's just translations. Yeah, really. But there's some pretty exciting cards. Uh, we got some, like, the Stellar Terras. Uh, lots of different energy types, kind of similar to Shining Pokemon. Um, some support for those. We've got like some pseudo reprints of old iconic cards that were very strong, uh, and we have some proofers like the Vikibolt on the screen here. So, um, unless you have anything to say, Sir Lucas, how about we hop on in? I'm down. So the the order of the cards might be a little bit whack. Before the pot, I was trying to sort them, and then Landon was like, "This is stupid. Just talk about <laughs> them." So you then you make me sound so evil. I just no. don't think we're doing a set review. So oh, not evil. Okay, like I didn't mean it like that. He was just like, oh, we're not doing a set review. Just talk about the cards. So, like, the Charger Bug is after the Vicable because the Charger Bug is, like, better than the Vicable. Yeah. But, like, it's <clears throat> whatever. Because okay. there's an old Vicable that's better than this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so this, this Vicable is literally nothing. Uh, it's a stage 2 90 damage hit and run. Just literally play Hatterene V, please. I mean, this card maybe in a world could be good, but not really. Landon, bro. Now we switch for when they're... It's not a fair day. The one fan was very good. It was one for 40. Yeah, but that was like strong energy, weaker times, and a stage one. And it had Robo Sub. Skibbity Toilet. Next card. Talon Flame. So, double colorless, arrow chase. 110 plus 110 if your opponent's had a Pokemon that tree causes two or more. So, there is there are tools that work. It one-shots Chen Pao, but it doesn't because you have double Hero on. Oh no. Um, let's just RIP. play Bex Caliber of our own. Let's just never play this card. I'm down. You want to move on? Yeah. This card's really There's bad. There's good ones, but we can get through these poopers pretty fast. Galvantula Lucas, EX. Lucas did not like this card. I, I don't, think this I card didn't is really like, good. I didn't like this card. Um, we're, we were talking about it with Joltik, um, which you'll see much later on because Joltik was like sort of. But we're going to read this card. We have Galvantula EX. It is a 260 HP Lightning Terra Pokemon. This is the first example of. Stellar Terra. That's actually really bulky. 260? It's not that bulky, but it's pretty bulky. It's stage 1. Um, that's pretty average for stage 1, I feel like. But its first attack is 110 for Lightning Colas. You do 110 more if they're active as an EX or a V, so 220 for 2 against most things it's relevant against. One prizers will be going down to the 110 pretty frequently, so it doesn't really matter. You might want to um, raise your voice to a little bit. I don't know. Okay. Uh, second attack is Folderite. <laughs> Um, I feel like it's going to get translated to something else, but it is 180 for, funny. for a funny attack cost. Similar to the Shining Pokemon. Grass, Lightning, Fighting. Uh, 180, you discard all energy, and they're item locked for the next turn. Which is pretty good. Like, yeah. I think... <clears throat> I'm not sure how I feel. Because you have no way to power this up normally. But they printed a really broken Joltik. Uh, well, we'll talk about that later. Um, sorry, again, with the sorting thing. But I think... This card is... I can't tell. So, I like Banette because Banette is something where you can lock it in the active and, like, Alakazam. I, I think this is less of, like, a... Um, this is less of a destruction. It's more of a... Yeah, more of just aggressive. Like, you're two-shotting and item-locking. Uh, the Joltik would... We'll see it later. It basically powers up two of these for the rest of the game. You can power up yeah. two, two bench Joltiks. Um, and then you could go, like, Iono, Folderite, and they're item-locked. Think of like just two I'm shots. Pretty strong. Right like I think that's really good. And the first attack is like serviceable just as a two shot option. Mm -hmm. I think this card is actually pretty playable. Uh, I think the card's only because playable. Of the <laughs> the yeah, Joltik the Joltik's broken. Really broken. I think you might run into a problem though because Joltik only has like thirty HP. So if you're running against Monkey Dory or anything with Snipe, this deck's gonna be pretty weak unless you um, can evolve things first or find a way to protect them. Please don't say Rabska. Play Rabska. This deck would just Rabska. get cooked by Dragapult. They just KO two Joltiks with their attack. But I think this card is like I don't think it's gonna be like a broken meta deck. Yeah, I don't think it is either. Um, but I, I think, think it's gonna has a lot of potential because uh, the first deck is just serviceable. It's like a good two shot option. It can one shot basic EXs pretty easily. So I think this card, I think this card is better than than it looks. Yeah, 
I'm starting to come around on it just a little bit. I don't really think there's any other way to power this up in a turn, though. Yeah, uh, Mirage Gate. Yeah, you could play Mirage Gate. You could play, like, Lost Galvantula. I don't know how good that would be. You would have other to things. be playing, like, Disruptive Lost, so I would be thinking something like Unfair but honestly, I could see it, because the Joltik is so broken. Think of, like, turn one going second. You could just attack with Joltik and, like, fully power up a hands. Um... Or just any attack. Yeah, right. real. I was thinking and, and this deck could be, like... be way more of a box. Like you could be playing like a Joltic box going second and just play like one of these or something because the Joltic we'll see is really really good. It might be like the actual best energy acceleration attack they've ever printed. It's one energy for four energy. We'll get to it. I think we can move on from from Gil Manchu, though. Yeah, I think it's just a well. We'll talk about Joltic more. This will this will we'll talk about this more later. This card, card this card sucks. So <laughs> I actually thought that this card I didn't fully you just rank. Thought this, this was better than. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know, bro. I was wild. Two hundred and twenty HP, basic ex Lapras Terra, so it is not affected by bench damage. One water, forty for each energy attached to this, so it's like a forty modifier, just worse yeah. than Chen Pao. Yeah. And then for water psychic metal, you look at top twenty and attach all the energies you find there. Two this is worse than Jolte. This card is just bad. Yeah, because there's a two prizer. And it's two retreat, weak so, metal. I don't card, need to talk about this card this like, card at all. This card sucks. Uh, the only reason that it's like playable is it's not. Orthworm EX. I think this card is actually pretty cool and could some play. This card's funny, Read this but one. I... Th so, okay. Orthworm EX from Scarlet Violet 7. Ability, Pummel Back. If this Pokemon is damaged by an opponent's attack, put two damage counters on the attacking Pokemon for each metal energy on this Pokemon. And then for four colors, so it is 150, and the defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. So, I think you just the idea you hear play this with Metang, you put all the energies on it, and then anytime they even think about poking you, they take a big fat hit back, and then you have I a don't decently think efficient good. attack. I think it's it's not great, but I think it's playable. It's like probably playable. I think you could win a League Cup with this deck. Real. If someone can win a League Cup with this deck, we'll make you. Should this be my challenge? Should I try to win a League Cup this season with Orthworm EX? No. Just for Orthworm and 4 4 Metang Red Ninja? Do it. Just play it like Dialga for Super Odds? Do it. Sure, man. I don't think this deck well, is very like, good. Because, like, the thing is, it's, like... Literally, if you have, like, six medals on this, and they just poke you, and you do, like, 120, it's not that hard to get a ridiculous amount of medals and play with Metang. I think this card is fine. Maybe um, this card I, is fine. I don't think fine. it's, like, a super, like, tier one, but you I, I do genuinely play, like, think this card is playable. You could play, like, Bravery Charms and Hero Capes and, yeah, like, just pennies. If they... Well, you don't really want to penny it. You don't it. want to penny it. But it can get really painful to attack this thing. And if you're not one-shotting and you have to attack it twice, it's, like, basically two-shot. It could be two-shotting you with its own ability. That's and then kind just, of true. It can also do, like, a weird thing where you can boss something up, 150, trap it, so you can, like, trap and two-shot it. Um, I think this card is, like, better than it looks. Actually, this it card also, doesn't look it, bad. It is four retreats, so you can heavy baton it, um, which is cool. Oh, true. <clears throat> yeah, wait, this card's also not that bad. grass resistance, so it can be good against certain things that have... And fire is not really super relevant, so... I think what about the better. fire ogre pond though? True. Oh my goodness. How could I forget the flame mask ogre pond? I was thinking about what if we called it yogurt pond? And the Bro. red one could be like strawberry flavor, green could be like <laughs> apple, uh what blue other? could be blueberry. Yeah, real. Is that and what's then the other ogre pond? Oh ground could be I don't know. Cinnamon? No, 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 no. Is that even wait, a thing? Wait, 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 we have to theorize. Yogurt, yogurt pond. What would the fighting type be? I want to Photoshop a picture of just ogre pond with yogurt on it. <laughs> no, that would no. Look like you a have to do. Thing. You have to do it like you have to make one of those tube things. You know, like the the go gurts. Um, yeah, it's just yogurt. Pond. Like when, <laughs> remember when we threw go gurts at our friend's house? Real. Oh, that was funny as hell. We did no. do that. So you Photoshop a go gurt, and then you have the ogre pond. And then you have like the little the ingredient that you're basing it on. So like you have the the the, uh, the teal mask, and then you have apple underneath I it. See. I think it's kind of funny. That could be funny. Well, okay. This is Orthworm. Orthworm is okay. I if you can make it tank, it's like actually. I think tank. it's playable. You can play like Hero's Cape and stuff. For survival brace, maybe that's playable. That's true. Survival Pumble brace back. would be Pumble fine. Back. Okay, cover fossil. So what is this, this oh, is the get? fossil t for. <coughs> My god, what did I do? What did I do? Okay, I'm going the wrong way. I'm going forward, but I'm meant to be going backwards. Sorry, sorry. Well, you literally did it directly after it. Caracosta. What has he done? Cover Fossil. Play this card as if it were a 60 HP basic colors Pokemon. It cannot be affected by any special condition. Ow. I just scratched a pimple. That really hurt. <laughs> can't be affected by any special conditions and can't retreat. 
At any time during your turn, you may discard this card from play. Its ability is prevent all effects of Pokemon's attacks of your opponent's attacks done to this Pokemon. It's just a, it's a, it's just a save life. Nothing special. Um, By the way, shout out to Antoine Boulet for the translation. Real. I think we can move on to the thing this evolves into. Okay. So we have, I don't actually know what the ba- what the, the stage one is. And then stage two is... Tortuga. Tortuga. Oh, Tortuga. That was like, I, I'm i so mad that I forgot that. It was good Tortuga, as well. we had um, you had the Lily, Lily, Lily and Archon. Well, what? And that, yeah, those were the three. They all had the same ability and it was, but Tortuga was optimal though. Why? Um, because it was cool look, looking. Active, actually? Real. Uh, I'll read Terracosta, though. Its ability, Ancient Guidance, is bad. It uh, makes all of your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active evolution Pokemon. It has two water for 150. Um, this card is already understated, but keep in mind it also evolves from a fossil, so it is extra poor. Because it can't get Buddy Buddy Pop. Yeah, you can't search for fossils like really easily at all. I guess you could Irida for them. Um, but it's just not worth setting up. Isn't there like actively cards that search for fossils? Yeah, but they're all like usually they look at top seven. Or there was the research stadium, which is or fossil lab or whatever it was. That card was really good. Um, but yeah, what was that it was just again? Not necessarily, It was just you could end your turn by searching your deck for two fossils that um, stage ones usually have. Oh, that was really good. Double yeah. Dactyl GX. Gross. Oh, Aerodactyl GX. I forget what that card even does. <laughs> Caracosta is like okay if you can get it up because <coughs> I like the extra damage boost like it's especially the permanent it's it's just not worth. Archaludon. It's not worth either. This card is a stage one. I thought it was a stage two. Yeah, I guess it's one eight HP three, two two okay, metal well, one Okay, let's just explain the card. I was going to. I oh, really was sorry. about to read it. Okay. Uh, its attack is two metal one colorless one sixty. Can't attack during your turn, and your Pokemon with any metal energy attached have no retreat cost. That's a sick so, ability. So this is like Darkra EX or what's a more recent example? Uh, Zero Aura GX. Zero Aura GX. Is that the most recent one? Is that the most recent one? There's like Manaphy EX. That's that's less recent than. I uh, know. Yeah, I don't know. Th- this is like a pretty common ability they play place onto like basic EX and V's and that kind of thing. Uh, it probably won't be very good as a stage one just because it's less splashable. Its attack is kind of medium. You don't really really be playing this in Metang decks. Yeah, um, like Zero Aura GX and Darkrai EX. Is this worth an Orthworm to just bounce between your Orthworms so they're all tanking? Bro, oh, we're tank. building Orthworm. Orthworm, mad tank. Hell yeah, Orthworm, <laughs> the tang. I love and this. This, be, this is just a way worse attacker than Zamazenta, based, like, than one cry Zamazenta, so I don't think this is ever worth. Just yeah, play regular no. Switch cards. I agree. Like, I think these if kind this of was a basic effect on like the Duraludon, this is our Yo. Duraludon. What? Do you see our camp? The, on our webcam, it looks like our, like, Air conditioner is shaking. I don't know. I'm going insane. Archer Ludon. Okay. Iron Boulder. It's wild. Press. Bro, I... You're fine. It's just the way the camera is. I know it this is. This card is not good. I feel like this card actually has a little just, bit of what, what is the reason to play this over just attacking with Maradon's second attack? Like, so, you have to attack with Maradon to power this up anyways. This is a... T- oh. This is a two energy attacker. Let's read it. 140 HP future, so it kind of it's think of it as Iron Crowns as a buff that you need. Uh, so I think Boulder, 170. If you don't have the same number of cards in your hand as your opponent, it does nothing. So you're gonna have to like jump through hoops. It's weak to dark. Fighting resist is kind of nice. The retreat is not four. Four is kind of better. Cause yeah, know. real. But like I don't know. Yeah, this card just seems like very <clears throat> targetedly bad. You could you could maybe build like some sort of one prize future deck, but you have to play Iron Crown ZX to boost your damage, so you wouldn't be able to. Do You're that. like a two prize. Yeah, yeah. It's just not really worth to play this in a deck because you can also just attack with Maridon. Like the second attack does one sixty for free. Yeah, real. I don't know, but I don't and find this card. Condition. You could maybe play this as like a one of in a future box style. That's deck, what I was thinking. But future box is not a deck. It's kind of just we've kind of been proven that it's just not really worth playing. I and soon they're going to be stopping printing future Pokemon. They're so. still yeah maybe that's going to suck. This when might they be do. the last set that they print the future ancients because they usually keep like three sets, right? How many sets have they have? Something had? like that. I don't know. Maybe they'll be I doing. I think this is the th- third set because we had Temporal Forces. Yeah. Oh, and I would Twilight Masquerades is the third one. So I guess we we're getting a fourth set with future ancients. Maybe it's sticking around for a while. Wait, Anyways, what, do you mean? what what was the fourth one? Well, the we third had one? we had um, Paradox Rift, Temporal Forces. Oh, Paradox Rift. Twilight yeah. Masquerade, and then we have this. Maybe they'll follow. be keeping this along for longer because I think there's still some upgrades to be made. But you yeah, have to be and I guess like ancient and future Pokemon are not like they're in all the games. 
You have to be very careful about ancient though, because if you print anything better, yeah. it's like gonna go ancient insane. Box, yeah. I think we can move on from this card though. I don't think it's especially playable. If there was a way that you could, I think that maybe this card will be good if there's like a Malamar reprint or like Psychic Recharge. Nah. Like a, I don't know. Just a two hundred one seventy was intriguing to me. Kofu. I thought this card was good because I thought Volusia was different, but this card's not good. This card is so bad. Because okay. what does it do? Put two cards from your hand at the bottom of your. For a chill. I'm rolling over a water bottle. Stop. Put two cards from your hand at the bottom of your deck in any order. If you do, draw four cards. So, this card is just a bad <laughs> draw support. I'm just trying to get my, the water bottle out of the way, so I just, so you guys can hear. <laughs> while I'm, while I'm Damn. moving my chair. Damn. So, Kofu. This, that's um, supporter, by the way. I mean, I don't probably assume. This card is mid. This card um, is just mid. There's other card that's synergy like, with yeah. it. I thought the Veluza was better because I thought it attacked for Oh, why don't we talk about Veluza? Oh, is it next? So, Veluza is... Ready to cook! It's like me! What? Where? It's ability. It's ready to cook. Oh! It's me! Bro, and Sonic Edge? No, please, no. <laughs> not, no on pod, so not on the pod. Not on the pod, not on the pod. It's ability, attack, uh, it's attacks cost one colorless less for each Kofu in your discard pile. So, the previous bad supporter. And then for four energy, it does 110 and goes through effects. I thought this was really good because it was three energy and you could just play four Koku in your deck, discard them, and then it's better than Kramer and it has 130 HP. But and it's affected by weakness. Yeah, it is. But there's no way that you're ever attacking with this for free because you need all four of your terrible supporter in your discard pile. For real. Um, if it was three, I would have been in because even getting two in discard for one attack was fine. It's pretty good. Um, this card is insane though. Probominable. Insane is a bit of a stretch. Well, I say insane because like if you can get the four Kofus, this card is crazy. It's a stage one, and it has the same ability where you it costs one card less to attack. Ready to cook Kofu. again. Oh, ready to cook. Um, it's gonna throw a haymaker. And haymaker is water four colorless two fifty, and then this Pokemon can't use haymaker during the next turn. So like if you have four haymaker, if you have four Kofu in there. That's a one energy attack that does two fifty, which is pretty wild. Yeah. It's pretty good, but um, whack whack whack. I just don't feel like that's happening. The Kofu much. deck is not real. It is not ready to cook. You have to be playing like the Noctowl engine, which is coming up later. Mm, not in. Not in. Mm. It's like okay. Char this is the okay. So this charge bug is stage one, and it's Mirage Step Curlia, but for charge bug. So I can search my deck up to three charge bugs and put them on my bench. And then the top right there, I have one of the old Thicker Bolts and Temporal, force temporal Forces, which is Lightning, Lightning, 120 plus 80 for each of your bench Charger Bugs. So you can just, like, Mirage Step three Charger Bugs onto the bench. Your active Charger Bug dies, you pick a Bolt, and then you swing for 280, and then you put down a Grubbin. Still mid, though. Yeah, it's still mid. I don't it's know how many. It's Electric Generators, top your Vega Bolts. Oh, real. Not worth it. And then we should be playing Maridon and Iron Hands. Real. We just play Maridon. Like yeah. Yeah. I had gravity this card stone. Is sick. This card is okay. I don't. What I think do you mean? This card sick. is really good. I How? Think, <clears throat> I think this card is really good in control, and some block wax. Okay. So really gravity stone. While this Pokemon, this card is attached to, is in the active spot. Each player's active Pokemon's retreat causes one colorless more. Obviously, Landon has some strong feelings about this card. So I'm I going to so. I'm going to let him explain. Cause I think this card is mid. So I think this card is really good in control decks, uh, like Pidgeot control. You can put it onto your random Pokemon, and lock things in the active. Uh, like a one retreater goes to two retreater, you can't just attach or treat that anymore. That basically has no retreat cost. Or it has like a, you can't re it just can't retreat at yeah. that point. Uh, and then in block wax, I think it's really good because you can put it on your non Snorlax Pokemon that come down. Like you could put this on Mimikyu and like maintain an, a an active in the Pokemon, like a active lock, I guess you can say. I like it. Or put it on Rotom too, because I then if they boss Rotom, they can't just like <laughs> immediately get out with an attack retreat. I think it has some utility and can I be like a one-up in both more. control and Snorlax. I like it in control more. <coughs> Dang, Lucas is, Lucas is sick. I literally just got better. R.I.P. Which is so stupid because I but had some friends on. I think it, it could be good in like some other scenarios too if you're. Pokemon like synergizes with their active having more treat for like damage purposes. Yeah, like that Talonflame earlier. If you're playing a Spite Ops deck, we let's should play the go. Talonflame from earlier to do 220 as a stage two. Ain't no way. Um, but yeah, I think this card has some homes in controlling decks. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, Kling Clang. So if you ever wanted to beat Chen Pelly X, have we got the thing for you? Just 
This card sucks. Uh, once during your turn, if your opponent has a stage two in play, you may put this Kling Clang from your hand straight onto the bench. For two colorless, it is 130, and you discard all energies. It's weak to fire. It's a Kling Clang with 140, free retreat, minus 30 from grass Pokemon. So obviously, you can just double turbo kill a Chen Tao, but that's just not worth dying for. Lucas, are you playing Kling Clang in your decks? Yes, I'm going to be playing Kling Clang in oh every boy. deck, even in my Orthworm deck. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I do like the Orthworm. I don't think Orthworm beats Chen Tao, guys. Yeah, it does. Oh my god, there's a spider on the wall. I've seen that spider like three times today. What's its name? Jerry. Yeah, let's call him Jerry. Jerry the spider. Jerry the spider. Okay. That goes high. Clink, clink if sucks. you couldn't tell, it's like 2.46 in the morning for us, <laughs> so we're kind of just like giggly and stupid. I'm feeling good. Yeah, I can tell you're feeling good. I'm feeling better now. I was like falling asleep while playing a set against Landon. I've been cooking Lucas with Palkia at Duskmaw. That deck is pretty good. Yeah. It's feeling pretty good for worlds with the Palkia Duskmaw. Yeah. Uh, hit the odd. But anyways, next card maybe. Oh, woohoo! Dreadnought. I haven't seen this one. Its ability is Impregnable Shell, which I learned today. Impregnable does not mean unable to be impregnated. It means hard to destroy or unbreakable. Lucas expanding his vocabulary. Yes. So, like... Exquisite. Like, the fortress is impregnable. It's hard to destroy. If an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, we deal 200 more damage or more to this Pokemon to prevent that damage. And then for Triple Colors, it does... Hard Crunch, which is 80 plus if your opponent active Pokemon already has any damage counters on it. This attack is 80 more damage. So, <coughs> I was thinking, you could just play this in, like, Charizard, but then I just realized that Blustery win. This card's bad. This card's bad. Yeah. I don't think... I mean, actually, against Charizard, this would always survive a turn. It would. If they've taken at least one prize card, this would always survive. But it's not really worth taking a stage one that doesn't really do anything. Yeah, that's real. I think, like, honestly, I think most decks just have enough of a modular damage output that they can do a smaller attack that one-shots this still. Yeah, real. I agree. This is not worth playing. I don't think it is either. Like, I think that there's some situations where this card is good, but it's not in enough situations. So, this card's good, though. So, Lazzle, it's a 120 HP stage 1 Pokemon <laughs> that for two colors, it is does Sudden Roast, and your opponent hey, chooses... Lucas. You're not skibbity. That was a sudden that roast. That was a sudden roast. <laughs> your opponent chooses and discards one card from their hand. If that Pokemon evolves from its land it during this turn, your opponent discards two more cards. And for a fire double colors, it has 130 and you discard an energy from this Pokemon. So, you can, luck. you can go unfair stamp, evolve, sudden roast, and then just kind of win from there. This card seems good. Yeah. I think that there's going to be some utility in it with hand, like hand lock. This card I don't think this card will see much play. That is my take on this. It will see a tiny bit of play. Like I, I, I bet Santa. It's Rosa. not like Luxray, where you get to choose the card to discard. It's they choose. So you basically have to combine this. Like maybe you could play this with like Zerosic, but the more I've actually played Zerosic, the new one, uh, it does not feel very good because they just get to pick the three best cards to keep in their hand, and then this would just let them keep like the research in their hand, and then they just play it. So I don't think this card is really worth playing. I don't no, think it means discards two more with Zerosic. They just oh, three. it's three. Oh, okay. There, I could see a little bit more. Maybe there's you can go like Zerosic. I still don't think this will be very good though. I think this card could be like a one-one line in control decks because then you can go Zerosic, Salazzle. Yeah. And then you can like bench Radzar. That's like the only home I see for this, but eh. I think it's a good enough home, and I think Sander Wojcik will make this card have a date, have a limit on this page. Raging Bolt. This card was actually pretty good. This card was pretty good. Like, I thought this card was really bad. I had it in, like, the bottom tiers. Then I realized, oh man, this card's good. Um, Dragon type, Lightning Fighting. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This attack is 30 damage to that Pokemon for each energy on this Pokemon. And it's for a Lightning Fighting and Colorless, it is 130. So, pretty much, it's just a 90 snipe with a Sada and an attachment. It can be, like, a 60 to 90 snipe, and that's pretty good. Where'd Jerry go? Oh. I'm pretty I'm confident that this is probably better than uh, Sandy Shocks. No way. Why not? Because Sandy Shocks, you get to put your energies elsewhere. This has to be on the same Pokemon. What? This has to be on the same Pokemon. You have to have three energy on your Raging Bolt to snipe for 90. Yeah, Red but Sandy. the Sandy Shocks doesn't snipe. I mean, it's, I think they're, they're a little bit different cards, but like, I think this is overall just going to be a bit more utility as a one prizer. It's, it's attack, second attack does a much better damage output as well. I mean, I guess. Like, you cap at 90 with Sandy Shocks. And I guess this is, like, bul bulkier as well. This is bulkier. I like the 90 It has more retreat cost. I think there, maybe there's merit to playing one of each in Raging Bolt decks, but I think this card will probably just be played in Ogre Pot, Raging Bolt, 
Yeah, this person's good. Like you can just kill Curly. Yeah, you just good one up. Very good sniping attack. Like then you you also have the out of doing like gust trapping and attacking bench Pokemon. So it just opens up like a whole new line for the deck. That yeah, real before. And then if you're able to like trap something, snipe a bench, and then you get to Asada attach energy switch again. I don't know if this. No, they don't play energy switch. Never mind. Um, Sought out attack. Yeah, but still, you could be you then. Can get you, to could, like you could go out upwards of. You could be doing 180 snipe oh, eventually. I found Jerry again. If you were able to build this up over a couple turns, uh, which could be really good. That's fair. This card seems pretty good. I like being able to snipe for 90. Like okay. having sniping options and Raging Bolt, Sions. Yeah. Since the angle sure. of the deck didn't have. You didn't. Like, they didn't have access to it. Yeah, they didn't it's have not anything. something they had something for. Yeah, real. Slow King. This is not a good card. Oh, I've been seeing some hype around it. <laughs> the hype is not warranted. So, Psychic Colorless Inspiration Challenge. Discard the top card of your deck. If that card is a Pokemon without a rule box, choose one of its attacks and use this attack. Psychic Psychic Colorless 120. So, you can play this with Gardevoir and the new Stadium. Oh, I don't. I didn't put that in the new Stadium. Sure. That's fine. We can Wait, when, when's the new Stadium coming out? I don't know. I think it's actually in the the next like the world set. I'm pretty sure. I don't think it is. I, the card is not very good, anyways. So I don't think it really matters, but the card is good. There's a stadium that I might be forgetting that I might have forgotten to put. Who's Jerry again? Stop talking about Jerry. Okay, he's gone. It's just a spider. I miss Jerry. Okay, so there's a new stadium that's coming out where you can switch the top card of your deck with the, with the with the card from your hand. Mm, that's not what it is. Is it? It's literally you just put a card from your hand on the top of your deck. Okay, okay. It's not good. You just you go minus two cards. I mean, there's minor synergy, so it might be somewhat playable just because this card will synergize with top decks. But if it was just a Rangaru, I think the stadium would have been good because it's a Pokemon. Can I draw one? It's still minus one. It's like a Rangaru. But you're minus two for one card. Yeah, you're real. So ba basically, what you have to do, you have to set up Gardevoir. Not attack with the Drifloon or, or Screaming Tail. Attack with this stage one that then you then have to play other bad Pokemon to discard the top card. And then you have to play the stadium. So it's just not worth playing this ever. This card is never going to be good. Bro, but Jake Gearheart said it was. Jake Gearheart's probably. Nah, I think I think maybe there's a chance. Ain't no way. I don't know. but This will never have a limit stage. Damn. Okay. This card's acceptable. Well, this card's okay. So Ledian is a stage one. Its ability is Star Pattern. Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand, to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon that has 90 HP or less remaining with their active Pokemon. And for two colors, it does 70 damage. And also, it's for retreat. It has for retreat and it too. Fire. Um, I saw someone on Twitter with like a de like a decently like popular Twitter page that said this is a one one line in every deck, and they are wildin'. <laughs> this card is not that good. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. I think this card is like okay in some decks, but I don't think this card will see that much play. It's just like one of those cards that you're like, whoa, this card's so sick. I just get to evolve and then gust? So then it's you need very conditional. Very conditional. You need bench space for it. You <coughs> you're need never, to find it. You're never taking your last two prize cards with this, and that's when gust is really good. You're not like being aggressive. You're basically, you're able to kill small one prizers with this. Um, so you could chase like Charmanders and Pidgeys or whatever. And then you can two-shot things. Like, if you leave something pretty close to dead, and then you need to re-gust it to kill it again. But it's never, like, going to take an aggressive KO, um, like Boss or Counter Catcher or Prime Catcher would. So I don't think this card is really playable. Yeah, I don't think this card... I think this card is okay. Not very good at all. I think this card might have a limitless stage, but I'm not that confident it will. It will be, like... I don't know. It will be some crazy dude who's, like, scared of freaking Curlio. Hydrapple EX. Everyone was kind of like really hyped about this card, but I don't think this <coughs> card is very good at all. It's a stage 2, 330 HP, evolve some Diplin, and then its ability is Ripe Charge. Once during a turn, you may, attach your, you may attach one basic grass energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. If you do, heal 30 damage from that Pokemon, and if it recovers colors, it does 30 plus 30 for each grass energy attached to all your Pokemon. So it's like you can flood the board. But other than this card, I don't know that many cards. How do cards. we feel if this was just Deluge on EX that healed 30 on each? Would that be too broken? Eh. Maybe. Yeah, kind of. Because this deck like has to play Gardenia's Zigger. Yeah, I think, I think, I think <coughs> you would just focus on getting as many days in play. I, th I don't think this card is horrible. Yeah, um, but I don't think it's great. Because it kind of synergizes with itself in multiple ways. 
you're wanting to build up a board full of energy. This accelerates energy and also helps keep energy in play by healing its other Pokemon and itself. And it has 330, so it would be quite tanky if you're able to go, like, attack, um, right charge, right charge to itself. And then heal 60 off. If you could combine it with maybe the new Ace spec to heal 150, I don't know if you want to go that far. Uh, I think this card has some legs. Not only does it heal itself and accelerate, it also hits Charizard for weakness. So I think this, this card... I think it could see some play. There's other, there's a lot of like branching off good cards in the Diplin line because there's like Flapple, Appleton, Diplin, and Hydreigon there. There's so many different Pokemon from this line. Is this a new Pokemon? I've never seen this before. Yeah, I don't know. Is this like in the DLC or something? Maybe. Because I've also never seen Hydrapple. Yeah. But it's cool looking. It's like an Aqua Hydra. It's pretty sick. You should see the one where it's like, it's an, it's like an Egypt thing, I think. Egypt thing. And it's like all of the characters are sculpted in like um, one of those statue things where they're carved into the wall. I don't know. You know how we saw in the in hieroglyphics. The, in the Great British Museum of Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I think we can the next card. Joltik. Here's the cracks. Joltik. So this, this thing is so good. Yeah, so Joltik thirty HP. Basic Pokemon, basic Pokemon, basic Pokemon, one prizer, one prizer, one prizer. Uh, one colorless energy, Sir, charging jolt. So check with the two basic grass energy and up to two basic lightning energy and, and attach them to your Pokemon any play, any way you want, then trophy of the deck. So it attaches four energy for one energy on a one prizer. This card is so sick, man. Uh, this is not only like it can be good with the Galvantula because it satisfies two of the types of Galvantula's attack, but you can play this with anything with either grass, lightning, colorless energy cost, or like one pip and then a bunch of colorless. Because this just puts four energy in play any way you want. If you just choose second and you can consistently get Charm on Charging Jolt, you can just set yourself up for the whole rest of the game with one attack. Um, and it's it's pretty weak. But, like, if this is your one, you could even play this as your only one prize Pokemon in, like, an all two prize, like, basic box deck or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and then it doesn't even matter if this dies because you just set yourself up the whole rest of the game. So, this is just really good energy acceleration. I think this card will probably see play in lots of different decks throughout its lifetime. Just think of things like Flare Starter on Volcanion and Cresselia, the ones that, like, went second and attached three energy. Those cards felt so insane when you got that effect. Like Volcanion in Greenzard back in the day. Yeah. Volcanion was so good going second. This is just every time it attacks. It doesn't even care when. Yeah, you could do and it's one more energy. energy. It's, it's, an more extra, energy. it's an extra energy. And it's like a colorless energy to attack. Only downside you have to think about it is 30 HP, so it dies to a single Monkey Dory ping. Um, if you're playing multiple Joltics, like Dragapult will kill two of these at once. Um, it's very weak, but the attack is broken. Yeah. Um... 8 out of 10. Crispin. I don't know how I put Crispin above Joltek. I don't know, man. It, it, this this was supposed to be Lucas's in order of ranking of how good they were, by the way. I was wild and I was tired. I'm still tired. I thought I was going to be like actively falling asleep in this pot, I'm going to be honest. Search your deck for up to two basic energy cards of different types, reveal them, and put one into your hand, and attach the remaining energy to your Pokemon in play. Then shuffle your deck. So it's literally attach an energy. And switch your deck for an energy. This card is bad. I think this card is fine. It's not bad. It's like okay. It's better than like Bead or Bayday, Bay, whatever you want to call that card. Yeah, I guess. It's from deck and it goes <laughs> into hand. So. I guess it's like a attack two. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a Melanie in a way. Not really. Melanie is so much better. It's draw three. Yeah, but it's from discard. So you don't have to do anything with this. From deck is way better than from any other zone. Because you have to do zero setup to get it. Uh, so I think yeah, this, this card could be good in Pidgeot decks that need that energy, like the Pokey deck that I'm playing right now. Could think about this. Yeah, like a one or, of no, Crispin. it's different types. Never mind. Or you could play this in like something like um, I don't know. I don't think this card would be fantastic, but I do play think it's a card in, that you could consider. You could play this in um, Galvantula. Yeah, so and a lot of those Stellateros could do this. I don't think it's that bad. If you have a draw engine and or an easy way to search supporters, and you're just hurting for energy like this this is probably better than Mela and Dragapult uh, I disagree I don't, I don't think so I don't it's know. just more proactive like you don't have to be knocked out but Mela draws cards this also just gets the psychic energy 
Over I think this card is pretty good. Maybe it is better. This card's good. Trust me, it's good. It'll see play. Is it better than Joltik? No. Vulnerable tree. Venerable tree. Venerable tree. This card is cracked. I call it. This card is bad. It is not bad. A spec. Stadium. Once during each player's turn, they may search the deck for a stage one Pokemon that evolves from one of their base Pokemon. If they do, they can search the deck for a stage two Pokemon that evolves from that Pokemon and evolve it. So you go stage one from basic into stage two. You can't do it on the first turn that Pokemon comes into play or on the first turn of the game. Um, so you can't break timing rules of evolving. But if you're playing like a rare, or rare candy deck or stage two deck, uh, you just play this, I think. No. It's I literally so easy. I don't think this card You just go good. turn two. In, like, say you're playing like a Pidgeot deck. Okay, candy Pidgeot. Uh, Pidgeot for this. It's just a candy in one piece. Like it, It's a one card candy that it literally just gets everything from the deck. If you're playing like a Team Evo, or if, you, if you're playing what like trying to... What ever going to use this? I just think this is a very powerful deck building tool. Like what? Well, like well, literally, what that Dragapult needs either the new tool, a spec, or the. What about if they have that new supporter? Or the new upper, I think. I don't think you need new upper. Just play the new supporter that we just saw. Bro. And then play Scoop Up Cycle. So, how are we doing? I guess. Uh, then play Scoop Up Cycle. <laughs> or this card. I don't know. This card is sick. I think I think this card is not like. is It's not broken. It's not broken. But it's a very, very powerful setup card. If you're just looking to set up stage two, is like I think this probably could see playing expanded too. Um, are we all going to Meganium with this card? And yeah. The Meganium I, I think else? this card is just like a very cracked effect. It's just you just get to go stage one to stage two without a rare candy. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it is also like a double search card as well. That's pretty good. I think I don't this know. card is really good. But there's so many stage twos that have entering the battlefield, entering play effect. Effects like Charizard. Yeah, that I mean, this just can't. You could use this for Charizard. Just you turn can't. two. I mean, you can just go Sealstone. This into Pidgeot. Pidgeot to Charizard. You could do it. I guess. Yeah, if you're playing. Pidgeot. And it would also really help if you if you were playing like Dragapult Charizard Pidgeot. This would be so good in that deck if you're playing Triple Stage Two. Yeah, this, this just enables like a whole engine. This card is really strong. Lucas is just hating so I hard. I could see Venerable Tree, but I like Unsure Stamp. That card's pretty good. Bufalon is also pretty good. Bufalon is also pretty good. So Bufalon has the ability Curly Wall. Oh, wait, also, is this card better than Joltik? This card? Um, ah, uh, the, the Venerable Tree. I don't know. I think they're both just really powerful setup cards. Yeah, real. Is this card better than Joltik? Probably not. Bro, what? No, I mess up. Okay, Curly Wall. If you have any other Bufalon in play, your basic colors Pokemon take 60 less damage during your opponent's Pokemon's attacks. You can only apply the effect of one Curly Wall ability at a time. So, this so you, will be... You call this for 130k attack next turn? Oh, yeah, real. It's pretty relevant. It's not a bad attack. It's not a bad attack. So, mm, the, you will see this in the Terrapagos deck. In the Terrapagos deck that we'll be seeing. Maybe. Uh, also keep in mind this could be good in control with the other Bufalon that lost sends energies. Uh, your basic colors Pokemon. So basically this would be really good to just loop uh, Ursaluna because you could have 320 HP Ursaluna, which is pretty strong. Um, I don't know how good this card really will be in function just having two random Bufalons in play. Maybe the Trapagos plays this, but I don't even think you would. I think you play this in Trapagos. <coughs> Because Trapagos is such a, like, not, bull, it's not a tanky deck. And then with the Bufalon, it actually has, like, a bunch of, it's just really tanky. Like, what, are you playing Bravery Charm Bufalon? No, know. you're not, you're not playing Bravery Charm. You're playing, like, and literally any other tool. And then you can just play Bufalon. And they can't get through the Bufalon. Because there's no, like, a lore and muck. Maybe. I don't know. I think this card's good. This card's also good. Uh, wait. So this card's not, is this card better than Joltek? Dude. Dash Bun EX. Ability. Full meal time. Mmm, hungry. <laughs> Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may heal all damage from each of your evolution Pokemon. If you do, discard all energy from each Pokemon healed this way. And then for two colors, it does one third reading. Your opponent's life Pokemon is not confused. So. This is a decent card. This card's really good. I don't think it's really good. Not really, but it's like good. Because you can go evolve, heal everything, Turo, pick it up. And then attack, attack with like a one prior with like a one energy attacker. Like this would go crazy with Greninja. 
I don't think you're really accomplishing anything. You just Turo instead. I think the problem you're going to encounter with this card is if you're trying to Turo this, you should just probably Turo the Pokemon you're healing with this anyways and just not play this card at all. Uh, I don't think this is really going to solve like spread problems. This isn't like Cheryl where it's just like good a on supporter. its own Pokemon. It's not, yeah, it's not a supporter. Um, this card is okay. I think it might be a 1-1 line in some decks at some <coughs> point. There's also the consideration of maybe if you can make this tank itself, its attack is somewhat serviceable, its low attack cost confusion is really annoying. You're three-shotting things, <coughs> at least. Two-shotting basic EXs, one-shotting basic Pokemon. You're going to run out of double turbos, though. I don't think this is really tanking much hits anyways. I, I don't think this card's going to see very much play. It definitely will have a limitless pace at some point, though. It will have a limitless pace. This card is good. Um, this card has a <coughs> desirable effect. I don't think it is good. Damn. I think it's fine. This card's good. Is this card better than Dual Tech? Get your nasty dog. I didn't off. mean to, okay? Bro my just foot. put his foot on me. I didn't mean to, your, okay? I was. Your foot is like disgusting. Cause my. Dirty I, too. Cause I'm wearing Crocs, okay? Crocs are so bad. Li all listeners, be aware that Lucas has gnarly feet. Dude, that's not. <laughs> okay. Okay. First off, I showered today. Second you off, you did not wash them dogs. I did. I literally used the bar of soap on them. Bro, put the soap on your dog. Yes. You did not. Yes, Diplin I did. Diplin has Bro, an attack for dirt. You can't just call BS on me like that. I can see how dirty your dogs are. Because they're Crocs. I literally wore my Crocs today and <laughs> went from the cleanest they can be to the dirtiest they can be. I'm going to talk about this Pokemon card. 90 HP, stage 1, grass, 20 damage, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by basics next turn. So it's a decent evolving stage 1. If you're playing this in um, like the high Drapple deck, then this is pretty good. Is this you, card you better could than maybe, Dolphic? No. Uh, but you could maybe just beat a deck with your evolving stage one, which is pretty funny. That's fair. I like this deck just beats Raging Bolt. Yeah. Uh, next card. <coughs> Fan Rotom. I think this card's probably better than Joltek, maybe. I don't know. I don't think. I don't know. Joltek is just going to be really good. This is going to be really good in the Trapago stack. So Fan Rotom. Once during your first turn, <coughs> you may search your deck for up to three cards Pokemon with 100 HP or less and put them into your hand. You cannot use more than one fan call ability during your turn. And if it recalls to just 70 and if there's no stadium in play, attack fails. So, Trapagos cannot attack on the first turn. So, this card's pretty good. Like, 70 damage on turn one is pretty good. But also, you can grab Bouffalant with this. Like, the Bouffalant has 100 HP. Yeah. I don't think this is really going to be... Actually, maybe this isn't even good in Trapagos. Uh, maybe, if, I guess, if you're playing Bouffalant. But what, what is your Trapagos deck? Four Trapagos, four Bouffalant... A couple Rotoms? Like, you need other Pokemon to put in play. Four um, Hoot Hoot. Knock Towels. Oh, I guess maybe. I don't know if that's the engine. Um, but yeah, this is going to be like a good setup card. This is probably at least a one of. You're, you're, surely you're playing an amount of 100 HP or less. And this is just like Poopa EX, but it's um, better because you can Nest Ball for it. It's not a coming into play effect. It's just, it's like Squawk. You can only use it your first turn, but you can um, Nest Ball for it. Yeah, and yeah its attack is pretty good. Wish I had Free Retreat, though. Yeah, this card would be really good if it had free retreat. Yeah, this card should have free retreat. But, <coughs> so this card is not better than Rotom? Hmm? Uh, is this card better than uh, Joltik? I don't know, but you can drop a bit, I think. Why? I don't think it's really useful. Fine, I'll stop. <coughs> Noctowls, this is the card that I was mentioning a little bit. Once during your turn, when you put this card from your hand, it evolves into a Pokemon. Retreat. What the heck? Yeah, I don't know why the birds are not having, like, I, it's a literal fan of the bird. Yeah. So, once you're during your turn, when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, if you have any Terra Pokemon in play, you may search your deck for up to two training cards, reveal them, and put them in your hand. Terra Pagos is a Terra Pokemon. This could also be serviceable in other decks. I think Palkia, the, the current Palkia deck we're testing, gets really good with uh, Lemusnet because you can play Staculate, and Palkia does way more damage. And I, I could see this. You just play a basic EX play this card like i mean a basic terra ex i mean or you could play this maybe in zard but not really because you have to like candy before you use this ability which is kind of counteractive because you want to use this to candy but yeah. i think this is just like a pretty decent engine card i'm not really certain that it will be the engine trafficos goes with because trafficos kind of wants I, I could see trafficos being a big girl deck a lot more than the noctowl deck yeah I think Babero is all like just insane. Yeah, Babero is just a very good card. I think this is gonna have trouble 
tweeting that out because it's it's pretty conditional. Um, it's not protecting you from hand disruption. I don't really think there's any deck. It's just not a great setup effect because you have to kind of be partially set up already to use your setup effect. That's true. Um, That's fair. That's why it's different than Drizzile. Yeah. I like it's definitely not as good as Drizzile because yeah, you have to have. And it basically makes you have four Pokemon in play because you need to. It, if you're not a Terra deck already, you have to play just like a stupid Stinker Terra Pokemon. Like Palkia would play probably Water Ogre Pond, which is just not a very good card to play in Palkia. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how good this card is. I think it's fine. I mean, this, this card, this seems card really will strong, probably play. But see I you play in some decks. Like, I don't. I don't think it's very strong. Honestly, the more I think about it. I thought it was really good when I first saw it, but I think it was just too conditional. Yeah, real. Like, you have to be partially set up to use your setup. But the effect is, like, like, pretty broken, honestly. Oh, yeah. Like, this is uh, literally shady dealings in Teleon. Yeah. On a stick one. Okay, (coughs) Lacey. Shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw four cards. If your opponent has three or fewer prize cards remaining, draw eight cards instead. I think this card is actually really good. This card is really good. I saw people hating on this. I think I saw Azul hating on this. This card is really this good. This is a very easy to get to shuffle draw eight. Um, I think you could play multiple copies of this in some decks. Shuffle draw four is pretty bad, but it is serviceable. Like think how many times you've drawn what you need off of Judge or Iono for four, um, and then shuffle draw eight is just an insane effect that is a very good supporter. And able you're able to just spam this like after they hit three prize cards. This could be pretty good even in like controlling style decks because. Um, I mean, I, sorry. Uh, you're able to keep them. You're in the game a lot longer, so you could play a lot more of these. Uh, you're not just like going. They're not going three, two, one, or like three, one. In theory, the game. The is only longer, thing so. I don't like about this is that you're using your turns where your opponent's on three or fewer prize cards to not be disrupting them. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I just think of some this in like. I don't, I don't think this is like a card in every deck. I'm just thinking of maybe something like Rock Strike Malamar. That that kind of deck would have been really good with this card, like uh, as a couple of copies. Lacy would be broken in Rapture Malamar. Not broken, but uh, that kind of deck, like a, a really strong like one prize deck that you're gonna get value. Like this is definitely better in one prize decks because you can go stay on this longer. Yeah, you can stay on three prizes. Yeah, okay, wait, that makes sense. It forces them to go down like, to three it, prizes. Maybe something like Sable's Art, uh, like a style deck like that where you're looping things. Like Shuffle Draw Eight is just really really good. Um, and being able to do this just without, like, a knockout effect or something. I just think this yeah, card, I think this card is broken, bro. I don't think this card is broken. Not broken, but I mean, like, I when I say broken, like I just mean really good. possible and likely one of or two of in a couple different decks. Yeah, you'll you'll be seeing this card. This card's really strong. Glistening Crystal. So, attacks of the Terrestrial... is a, It's an A-spec tool. And attacks of the... Attacks of... Oh my god. Attacks of the Terrastal Pokemon this card is attached to cost one energy less of any type. So, this can be played Dragapult. Maybe. This is worse than Neonup or Dragapult. Is it? Yeah, 100%. Because this, this I don't know why. Because you just. It has it's to, also much harder to find. This though. is two pieces, not just one. You still have to attach the other energy. Yeah, real. I don't know. Glistening Crystal is like okay, but I don't think it's I don't think it's very good at all. Like, you, you have to have like. A Terra Pokemon that specifically benefits a lot from this. Um, it's just kind of a little bit of value. Like, in Terrapagos, it would you just be... You could play this in the um, Galvantula deck. Yeah, but even then, like, it's not really better than Prime Catcher just to get, like, a little extra boost of energy attachment. Maybe if you but if really... But if it's in Galvantula, you can actually loop it with that one supporter that was attached one, grab one. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think this card will be okay, but it's, yeah. it's, it's really not that good it's very conditional there's yeah. not really that many good terrestrial pokemon that would abuse this except for I galvantula i still don't even think galvantula would want this more of anything i think mm. like stamp plus 180 i didn't want to be really good yeah real probably that's pro- I that's probably this card, I, I don't think this card will see that much play this card is like okay but it's just conditional but it will definitely get better as more terrestrial pokemon come out real like the the more terrestrial pokemon the better this card gets and it so. does discount any one energy type. So Which is nice. Like, it's like one of the only things. It's like one of the f- few times. This is one of the first yeah. times we've ever this seen This is the like only this. time I've ever seen a thing like this, I think. Because counter game and SP game. We're all one less colorless. Energy. Yeah, it's just colorless attack costs. So. This is like F any. Which is kind of cool. Terrapagos. And then after this one, we have two more. Terrapagos. So, 
Union Beats is 30 damage. It's, it's 30. It doesn't matter. It's two colors. You cannot use this attack if it's your first turn going second. 30 damage for each of your bench Pokemon. Sounds very underwhelming until you see another card. This card came out quite a while ago. Um, and it was really underwhelming looking at first. Uh, but, but it also does have a second attack, so you're better off. Grass, Water, Lightning, 180 during your bonus next turn. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by non colorless basic Pokemon. So notably cannot wall other Tirapagos decks with this. Um, looks hard to power up, but there is actually a very good card that will power this up pretty easily. Um, but the obvious synergy here is double turbo, pretty efficient damage with the first attack. Uh, 230 HP is on the bulkier side for a basic. Uh, no, you're not going to hit anything for weakness though, because you're colorless, which is pretty lame. Um, I still don't think they needed to put the text on this card on the first attack. Because think of like Raging Bolt, uh, Roaring Moon, they're pretty easily able to knock you out going second. Uh, and this is pro this deck probably is going first now and not really getting the advantage of being an aggro deck. Um, yeah, real. I don't think this needed the condition on it. I do think just because of the new item that this card will probably be pretty good. Um, I was I was thinking about it. Maybe, maybe you're able to play. I don't know. I don't even know what you'd play with this. You could probably play like Radgren, Energy Switch, Water Energy. Well, you don't have to do that because the horn. Oh yeah, because the horn does only catch the colors Pokemon. I don't know. I'm not really into this card. I don't think it's gonna be that good. I think the stadium will more just be like a utility piece. It will be pretty good in like Charizard because you can get things off the bench, fill your bench up. That's fair. Um, I like this card though. I mean, this card will see some play. Uh, there's not that many only basic decks. Like, maybe you'll, you'll wall out uh, Raging Bolt, but the second attack is where I think the strength of this card really is, and when that attack is really good, I think this deck will get really strong. Not really. Because like, <coughs> of the... Spoiler, can we go to the show them the stadium so we... Well, let's just talk about this one first. Uh, do you have anything to say about Tulip? Well, I want to come back. I want to come back to Tropicus. I just want to talk about the other cards first and then come back to it. Okay. So Briar, this this is, oh yeah, okay, this is really important. Briar is pretty good. Supporter, you can play this card only if you have, if only if your opponent has exactly two prize cards left. And then during this turn, if your opponent's eyes Pokemon is knocked out by damage from one of your Terra Pokemon's attacks, take one more prize card. I think this card saw way too much hype. Yeah, I think if, the more I look at it, the more it's like you have to be playing like Dusk Noir. Yeah, you have to have prize manipulation because if this card becomes meta, people will just play around it. If you win with this game one, they'll just play around, play around in games two and three. Uh, you might be able to catch a surprise with this, but and again later in the tournament, people know your deck list. Um, it's a very powerful effect. Um, but I think you need to be playing like at least a one one dust cloth or like a one one dust. Cloth. Yeah, because because they just can go from three to two or three to one and then just completely dodge this card and it doesn't do anything. Um, but in the cases where they go to two and you go from three to zero. Um, it's gonna get pretty broken, or like take a two prize on a one prize four state. Um, it is just say take an extra prize card. Uh, yeah. Mostly probably gonna see play with like Charizard and Dragapult. This could be pretty good in Charizard actually, with because you're already playing Dust Noir. Um, yeah, I like this in Charizard a lot. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many good like one of supporters for Charizard just because you have such easy access. Yeah, real. <coughs> but I like this in Charizard a lot. Uh, it's also but, okay in Dragapult. Um, I'd like to see the, the next card. Next card is Aerial Zero Under Decks. Players with... <coughs> <coughs> we Sorry. both got that cough going. Players with a Terra Pokemon in play may have up to eight bench Pokemon. If this card gets discarded or a player has no Terra Pokemon in play anymore, they, discarded, they discard bench Pokemon until they have five. If both players discard, this card's owner chooses first. So it's just Skyfield, if, but you have to have a Terra Pokemon in play. So I think this card's very good. Very good in Charizard. Uh, very good in Dragapult. It's kind of like Collapse Stadium, but better than Collapse Stadium. Also yeah. worse than Collapse Stadium, too. Yeah, not it's not direct like, <coughs> discarding of the Pokemon, but I like how it's like... Yeah, you have to like play this, fill your bench up, then discard the Stadium with like a loss vacuum or something. Oh, that's whereas, fine. Whereas Collapsed is like, play it and discard immediately. But this has the utility of being able to bench more than five Pokemon, which is a pretty big upside. It's not disruptive like Collapsed is, though. Yeah, I think Colossus. I think honestly, where I think this will be the best is genuinely Palkia. Uh, yeah, Palkia is going to get crazy better. with this. Look at your damage output. You can do two forty on your own. They bench like any Pokemon. Like you're doing. You're so easy. easily one shotting things with Palkia now. Yeah, Palkia is, is insane. 
Area Zero Under Deaths is a very good card. Uh, Skyfield is was a broken card. So. This is like way worse than Skyfield, though. Still being able to have the effect of eight Ventral come in play, even at the cost of Terra. So you basically only have seven. Um, if if there was just a stadium that said you could have seven Pokemon in play, that would still be busted. Even if you could have six Pokemon in play, that would still be busted. Um, I don't know if six Pokemon in play would be busted. Just having any amount of extra Pokemon in play is broken, I think. Uh, it's just true. you're literally breaking the rules of the game with this card. Um, yeah, real. I like any this card. deck, like being able to have like more. Like this could be good in Gardevoir uh, to have more things like in play. Double just, Dory. Yeah, uh, you just you just have so much bench space. You have almost like close to double uh, bench space. Yeah, I like this card. This card's pretty pretty skibbity. Very skibbity. Pretty good card. And then the, uh, this with Trapagos, obviously. Trapagos is yeah. a Terra Pokemon, so that fulfills the cost. So this is obviously built for that. And then it boosts you from capping at 150, it would be. It's capping at 240. To 240, which is a much better number. You're one-shotting basic EXs. You're one-shotting other Trapagos, like Roaring Moon, Rising Bolt. You're two-shotting any stage two EXs. You're one-shotting um, one prize Pokemon. Yeah, pretty strong. It's just that like, Trapagos will be like a really efficient deck. I just don't think it has... Doesn't have any one shot potential, and I think that's what's really holding it back. The other basic EX decks have that. Yeah, uh, real. And it's not really worth playing. And then the Glass Trumpet. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I messed up the no, placement okay. of this card. It's fine. Uh, glass Trumpet, you can only use this card if you have a Terra Pokemon in play, and you choose two of your bench Hollow's Pokemon and attach a basic energy from your discard pile to each of them. So and this is an item. This is a very powerful card. Um, there's just not that many Pokemon, I think, that will take advantage of this. Terrapagos will. It will, yeah. Being able to use the second attack on Trapagos is really strong. 180 and then block basic effects is really strong. Like, two-shotting basically everything and then being immune to basics, like, against something like Raging Bolt, like, you'd have an auto matchup against Raging Bolt. Yeah, literally. Like, this is a very, very strong card. Which is kind of funny, because I think Trapagos will have a weird space, because it will be worse against stage 2 EX decks than, like, Raging Bolt and Moon. But will be way better against those decks because <coughs> it can just wall them out with um, its second attack. Yeah, real. Uh, let's just look back at this card. Yeah, because I think that there's really this nothing is else. the best card from today. I think this card will be playable. Right. It will be a deck. Um, and then Glass Trumpet, I think, could be kind of cool. Uh, like there's Arc, there's Hisuian Zora, V Star, Lugia would never play this, obviously. I'm just trying to think of other colors Pokemon that could have used this. Um, but the obvious energy is Trapagos, because not only is it colors Pokemon to attach to, it's also the Terra Pokemon to fulfill the requirement for this card. Um, yeah. But you could play this in Arc, just so you, if you miss turn one attach, you could still attack. But this would be a pretty convoluted combo. You'd have to get energy in discard pile. You'd have to get Arc from bench to active after using this. And you'd have to bench Terra Pokemon. So, I think this card... Two lands Ogre Pond. This card has the potential to be really broken if they print either... A really good colorless Pokemon, or, um, well, basically that. Yeah. <laughs> but there has to be, if they printed another good Terra basic colorless Pokemon, or just a good Terra colorless Pokemon in general, other than Trapagos, because Trapagos is a little bit underwhelming, but also not. I'm really on the fence about Trapagos. Yeah, Trapagos is like a, is like a pretty good card. Cause it's just, just if like... it could attack like second, this card, no problem. I, this card was so good. But you can also just crown opal going second, I guess. Yeah, you can crown opal going second. It's not that consistent though. You have to get like, you have to get pretty lucky. Flipping Rad Ninja. Yeah, Rad Ninja Pokestop vessels, and then you, you can't just flip stuff in this sky field. Oh, we're gonna get the sky field. <coughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think this card's good. But that's all the cards. That's all the cards. I think there's a lot of interesting ones. Nothing broken yet. We let's don't have the full set. Let's just talk about what our favorite ones are. So so far, I think my one of my favorites is definitely the Joltik. I like the Joltik. I like the Salazzle. Salazzle. I like the, the Diplin that is immune to basics. I like the Terrapagos. I like the Skyfield Stadium. I think the only cards I like are Joltik, the Skyfield Stadium. And Terrapagos. I don't really like Terrapagos. I think the card I don't think this card's that great. I think it will come in and out of the meta as its second attack is better and worse. I think that's how I feel about the card. I don't think the first attack is that great. It's efficient damage, but nothing will attack you on second. I just don't think this is a standalone deck. I don't think it's, no. I don't think it's powerful enough. It doesn't have a one-shot option. It doesn't have a one-shot option. And yet. it's not tanking anything, really. With the Bufalons, it is. Which I think yeah, the Bufalons is really It's like you have 290 with Bufalon, but... Yeah, I think I think <coughs> Bufalon's really good. Maybe. Okay. 
Well, maybe. The, keep in mind, these cards are not LEGO Four Worlds, um, but there's just been a lot of cards coming out the last couple weeks. We wanted to get this addressed, uh, get this out of the way. I think next week we'll be m more talking about maybe some of the decks we've been testing for Worlds so far. Well, let's just mention, mention I'm currently testing Reggie Drago. Luke's Relix, Reggie Drago. I've been testing um, just tonight. I think I'm literally what? You're like 5 and 1. 5 and, five and 1 with, uh, it's like Palkia, Dustnor, Pidgeot. Uh, 6 it's, and 1. Yeah, the deck is very strong because you have multiple different lines with Dustnor. It makes your IMO more effective. Counterfetcher uh, makes your Palkia's damage output better. And most importantly, you can snipe with Rad Ninja really well. You can pop the Manaphy out of play. Shuriken, two things. Also, Shuriken plus Dustnor is 220, two Ledge Pokemon, which yeah, is really, really crazy. I did that a couple times to you. Um, yeah. That's really good. It's really good. But, so yeah, I think next week we'll be talking more about our world's decks. Um, but I think that's it. I'm sleepy and I want to go to bed. Yeah, I gotta drive home. But I don't live in Chilliwack anymore for more than 50 minutes. So. Well, you yeah. leave me. You leave where I live. No. Yeah. Guys, don't tell the 40 people watching this. We don't. Uh, but 40 yeah. people. Man. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, these are the new cards. These are the new cards. Look out for these in fall after Worlds. Uh, if you're not going to Worlds, maybe this is what you want to start testing. Unless you're going to like League Cups and Challenges, which I guess are happening. Um, or I guess we won't have this for the first, um, regionals. It'll probably be similar to when Lost Origin came out. How kind of how we had one regional. It was actually Baltimore, um, that was pre Lost Origin. Bub. But Lucas is falling asleep with the camera, so... I am falling asleep uh, That has been camera. our new cards. That has been the episode for the week. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all next Wednesday uh, with some more of our world's testing, because it's been going pretty well for Palkia. It has been. Positive win rate after Reggie Drago, which Lucas was not expecting, so... Uh, pretty fun. I sure hope it did. I sure thank you guys so much for listening to the Lost Mind podcast. Please like, subscribe, uh, comment how you feel about these new cards. Lucas is going to keep waving. Uh, yeah. I'm going to release some flashings. Goodbye. Goodbye.